Okay, so welcome back to another video. Today, I'm going to go over something really, really simple, which is just the five plugins that I use the most in the making of my most recent ambient album titled Ouroboros. This is sort of a dark ambient album. Um, I'm not trying to show any plugins that are sort of hidden and unknown. I'm just sort of giving an honest review of the five plugins I use the most, and I'm gonna talk about them, what they sound like, not the technicalities of how they work. I find that when I'm watching plugin tutorials, if I'm not like a sound design person and I don't know a ton, listening to the technicalities can be interesting, but more getting a vibe of what they sound like and how to use them is something that I find more interesting. So I'm gonna talk about what they sound like, how I would use them, and give you then audio examples of how they can really, really change your sound. So let's dive right in. Um, first things first, I've got this piano loop using some sort of basic polyrhythms, which is a topic I've covered in another video. And now what I wanna talk about is plugin number one, which is gonna be Black Hole. Now, this is a plugin which costs money. I should have given that disclaimer at the beginning that some of these plugins do cost money. I'm not telling you in any way, shape or form that you need any of these plugins to make ambient music. These are things which I've invested my money in because I think that they're worth it. So I have, obviously, I'm a, we're a very small channel here at ZigZag. Um, we have no affiliation with any of these. Don't feel like you need to go buy them. I'm not gonna like leave links to them in the description because my idea isn't to try and go and get people to go and like impulse buy things to buy things quickly. I just wanna show you things that I've used that I've purchased over the years, things to maybe think about, add to your list if you are um, someone who takes music seriously enough to wanna spend money. Now I believe this is a plugin which costs about $200, so it is an expensive plugin. Um, that's just the reality, but it sounds beautiful. And in my experience, there's no other reverb which sounds like Black Hole. Now Black Hole to me, even though the name is sort of dark and black holes, you think of them and they're a little scary. I think black hole is the most beautiful reverb that I've ever heard. It's not to say that it's the most natural sounding. It's not at all. But black hole to me sounds like the most beautiful parts of sort of the wide openness of nature of the world. And it's something that when you think about like the music from Lord of the Rings and there's that solo flute playing that really cheerful melody, it gives me that feeling of like happy nostalgia, calm and peace. And for that reason, I think it sounds really, really great on instruments which are played by human beings. I don't think it excels on synthesizers, just my opinion. So let's play it now on a piano and I'm gonna combine it with the other plugin which I use the most. And this is one of the most over talked about plugins in the history of the internet. So I know I'm not breaking any news here. We're talking about OTT, but the reality is, is that I probably use OTT more than any other plugin. And I believe that this one uh, is free. So I could be wrong on that, but I believe it's free. If it is, um, then definitely go download it because it's so easy to use and almost always sounds great. So you combine OTT, you just set the wet, dry, wet, wherever you want. And then black hole on its default setting and all of a sudden that piano I played for you in the beginning now sounds like this. So let's move on now to the um, second plugin, which I've got going on here. Excuse me, the third plugin, which I'm going to talk about today. And this is going to be Valhalla Supermassive, which is, in my opinion, it's a free plugin. So I think that there are probably better reverbs out there, but of the reverbs I own, this is by far the best for completely washing out a sound. When you think about that sort of electronic pad that that really just incredible beautiful ambient pads that you hear in the ambient music you love something like a super massive is going to be the reverb you want um there are reverbs which sound really great on live instruments on orchestral samples um but something like a super massive is going to give you the sound of something being from out of this world it sounds like it's in space it sounds just massive and it creates so much depth to whatever sound it is you're working on. So many of the presets in Valhalla Supermassive are great. And once again, this is a free plugin. So if you're into ambient music and you don't own Supermassive, 
cannot recommend this enough. Let's take a listen to a dry patch from Abyss, which is one of my favorite synths for ambient music, but today we're just talking about sort of effect plugins. So let's take a listen to this. So now when we combine Supermassive with OTT, we get this sound. Listen to the decay. <laughs> it goes on for so long. The decay is one of the more beautiful things to listen to. Now you can hear that's still going. Um, the decay is just still going and going and going. It is super massive. Um, so I'm gonna turn this group off, but you can hear that it takes a little while to build sometimes. In the beginning, you might not be able to hear the difference, but if you've got a pad playing for an extended period of time with super massive on it, you're really, really gonna be able to hear a difference. And that brings us into plugin number four, which is when things start to, in my opinion, get really fun, which is when you combine delays with reverbs. So the delay that I like to use because it comes with the Slate Everything Bundle, which is something I already own, not because there's anything, in my opinion, particularly special about it, but it's going to be Repeater. And Repeater is great because it allows us to change the, and this is true for many delays. I'm not saying this is unique to Repeater, but I just like the layout here. I like the look of it. It feels fun to use, and I think it sounds really good. So it allows us to change the, the rate of the delay in the different ears. So we've got the left and the right signal being delayed at different rates. We can have different amounts of feedback going into the delay. We can set high pass and low pass filters, of course, which I've got a little bit of here. Those are linked because I don't want those to necessarily um, be uh, different pitches. You can if you want to. And then I like to add a lot of color. It gives it a lot of grit. And then panning the different signals just gives the sound, particularly with your pads, even more width. I like to even sometimes change. You can see here the mix, the dry wet is different in the right ear than it is in the left ear. You combine all of these little things and it's not crazy. It adds just enough variance to just be another layer that when you then throw it into the reverb, it just sounds crazy. So let me play you this dry patch real quick from this again. Not my favorite sound in the world, but hey, we're gonna run with it. So then you add the delay, and once again, I'm warning you, this isn't gonna be necessarily crazy, but try and add this to your pads and to your synths, and then when you throw in your reverb after, we're, we're gonna see what it sounds like. But anyways, this is with the delay. There's a really cool sort of randomness about it that sounds musical in a fun way. Let that decay a little bit. And then 
what I've done on this final patch here is I've just taken the same exact MIDI, run it through the repeater, but then thrown on Supermassive and OTT. And now we start to get something which sounds a little bit more from out of this planet. Um, so yeah, I think that those things add a lot and definitely play around with them, particularly with your pads, with your drones, with drones more than anything else, you combine these three, a little bit of OTT delay and reverb, and you're going to be starting yourself off in a really, really magical place. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is another delay. So the final plugin here, plugin number five is going to be H delay from waves. Now, this is of course a paid, let me turn everything off here. This is a paid plugin. I don't remember how much it costs. I don't believe it's necessarily individually super expensive, but I'm not sure. But one thing I like about H delay is that it's really great for more sort of quote unquote standard genres of music. It's awesome for if you're doing anything in the pop world and you want more sort of traditional delay, H delay is going to sound beautiful, but it's got a lot of these presets or fair number in the special effects and the ambience. It's just fun for messing around, throwing on presets on things like Foley, and you get some really interesting sounds. So this one, this preset is called Scary Ambience Watch Out. And what I've got here, um, if I turn all of my effects off, is just some random Foley and atmospheric sounds that are just completely random. And um, let me turn the group on. just random like there's no there's no there's nothing intentional going on there it's just playing with different sounds so then the first thing i've added is this sound which creates this low ambient buzz and creates a lot of it you turn this on and you get something that sounds a little cinematic going on there now what i like to do a lot of the times when i'm going for just weird random sound design is layer h delays so i've got another preset on here broken filter dry wet's at 50 percent. you combine those two things and now with our Foley, we get some really interesting atmospheric, dark ambient sounds. So that's cool and everything, but if we throw this all through some of the plugins we've talked about before, and get reverb and delay and a little bit more distortion, then we can create something which is pretty darn spooky. So let's play this now. I'll pause it there for now. Um, but the only other thing that's going on that I haven't talked about plugin wise that I do want to throw in as a bonus six plugin, this didn't make it into the top five when I went back and counted uh, which plugins I use the most, but this plugin might be my favorite when it comes to ambient music. If I turn off all of the other, I, I mean, I can't say favorite. It's gotta be a reverb, right? But this is up there. This plugin DST, which I bought for the purposes of producing EDM for the purpose of giving some bass, some bite, um, there's something about this that I believe this, my memory, then I could be wrong. My memory was that I spent $50 on this plugin. I'm not sure, but I do believe it is a paid plugin. Um, but 
My memory, uh, or, or excuse me, throwing this plugin on sounds just brings out such a layer of depth and grit that I think that OTT is great for adding subtle amounts of it. If you want to really blow something out, then you add this plugin DST to it. Um, so I'm going to play everything with DST off just to give you a quick little bonus plugin um, to see how much of a difference that this can make. So let's just play things here. Let me turn it on. So things are pretty spooky. Um, I don't even have super massive. I have black hole on this just to show you that what I said at the beginning is, you know, there's no such thing as a rule in music. You can do whatever you want. Now, when I add DST, just listen to how much this brings out in the sound. I'm gonna turn it off and turn it on. It just, oh, it's beautiful. So I'm throwing that in there as a bonus, as a bonus plugin. Um, didn't unfortunately make the top five, but those are just the honest five plugins I use the most. Nothing fancy. I don't think I'm showing any plugins that aren't super well known. I think that these are really common, but there's a reason they're really common and that's that they work really well. So I would encourage you to, if you're thinking about buying plugins, I would always encourage people. It's something that so many people have to learn the hard way, but to just really be on top of keeping a good list of, you know, making sure things are in a good spot financially for yourself where you can afford these plugins, make a list of things that um, would really fill a need for you and just be responsible because if you impulse purchase things and they don't sound as good as you want right away, that can be really demoralizing. And there's a lot of other reasons to not impulse purchase plugins. I'm not trying to get people to buy plugins. I'm just giving uh, an honest review of the plugins I use the most. So if you have any questions, please do leave them down in the comments. Um, I would love to talk anything ambient music related. So until next time, I will catch you all later. Take care.